pink champagne I'm totally vibing It's true what they say It's all about timing Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Unscripted. My name is C Chronicles. I post fragrance related content on this platform, particularly Western fragrance reviews. If it's not fragrance reviews, I drop vlogs on this channel. So if you are not subscribed, please do consider subscribing and joining the family. And to those who are already subscribed, thank you so much guys for the continued support. Now, welcome to a compilation of some brilliant fragrances within my collection. I managed to pick seven from my collection. I like talking about something that I can show you right. The note of praline guys is going to be one that makes you smell edible it's going to make you smell like a snack there's going to be milky accords to that fragrance candy caramelly that type of thing so some of them are going to have even a nutty chandertone feeling as though they've got like hazelnut and almond in them and it's all accents that come from that praline note right uh and lastly some of them are going to feel like toasted sugar so anyway straight to the first one guys is going to be this oldie but staple in my collection and this is la via bell okay if you love the note of praline you're gonna get it in this guys this is gonna give you a fruity burst um i, I there was a time i was crazy guys about la via bell i would smell like this this was like my signature scent until of course i started adding more and more to an extent that i do not really uh, gravitate to this as much as i used to a long time ago but why it's here guys is because of that distinct overload uh, sugary note or sugar accord that comes from the praline it also adds a coziness to this fragrance some of you are going to even call it polarizing it's one of those fragrances that you do not wear when you want to hide people are going to fish you out you're going get compliments whether from people that are actually tired of smelling this fragrance or generally because they love this fragrance i personally think it's one of those that has stood the test of time one of the best from lancome so if you love uh, that praline note note mixing of course with the patchouli and underlying fruitiness you know boss lady vibe of a fragrance then i'm gonna recommend this one to you guys it's la via bell from the house of lancome and it's the first one on the lineup the second one, guys, is going to be from uh, Katy Perry. I'm not sure whether this one is still on the market or it's been discontinued. I don't know, guys. This is Killer Queen, right? Killer Queen is one of those that if you are accustomed to a lot of fragrances, it really does smell perfumey, you know, like something that you've smelled before. Sometimes I swear it's a La Via Bell kind of vibe that I get. And sometimes, you know, I could swear that I get like a flower bombish type of situation happening in here. Anyway, it's a jam. It is a concoction, guys, that includes mixed berries there. There's going to be plum as well, together with those berries, right? And then some floral, some patchouli, praline, most especially, and then a cashmere. No, no. This is going to be so sweet with an underlying sourness just slight sourness i guess it's maybe from some of those uh you know mixed berries turning a little bit soury right but the sourness is not enough to push this and drift it into what i would class a sour fragrance it still remains a sweet and the praline in this you know interprets almost chocolatey right so you're going to be in that kind of chocolatey wrap up of a praline together with a fruitiness and uh, it is one with a decent lasting power for the celebrity scent on about 12 sprays with this one i do not have to reapply which is something i cannot say is the same for some of her fragrances that i actually own so killer queen you know by katie perry is gonna be value for money as well as have you smelling like that snack guys is the second one on this lineup now this i'm gonna have to spray uh, on a test of paper fields at nightfall by zara one of the fragrances that i do not have a very good relationship with even in winter this is one that has this thing of giving me a headache you know even in the cold season and for this i'm going to say it's one of the longest lasting ones from zara if you know of a person who says oh i don't like zara's because uh they are not long lasting please recommend this one to them fields at nightfall is a fragrance guys in the same vein as um what's the name of that mom blanc is it more no it's not more this is her the dig and voltaire this is her right this is a clone for that and it's a bold white piercing floral with the woodsy feel to it 
the florals in here are doing the most and of course there is that praline that is why it's here the praline in here gives it like a nutty latonic kick uh, but it's a push and pull when it comes to this right so i'm gonna say uh this is going to give you like a 50 50 it does have the praline note listed there but it's gonna give you a 50 50 because the florals they are quite piercing this is one zara that i'm gonna say last till the next wash because i do have about 15 or 16 zaras in my collection and this i'm gonna say is on this mark because of how long lasting it is okay because of how long lasting it is very little goes a long way uh, so it's here guys as a recommendation if you like praline forward fragrances but do take note that this is going to have that tug of war between the praline itself and the florals there's a third one guys on the lineup and of course, this list wouldn't be complete, guys, without Ariana Grande's cloud, right? Um, I'm going to give it to Ariana, perhaps. I'm just going to take this off because I don't know why she always puts all these, you know, plastics and stuff. I mean, it, it makes no sense because you can't even spray it with the plastic on. The plastic is just like a holder, right? The actual bottle looks like this, right? So anyway, I'm going to give it to Ariana, guys, for being one of the celebrities that um, went for a dna that at the time was one of the best on the market which was br540 cloned that one and of course gave us a fragrance that was not exactly on the affordable side but that was value for money now this is cloud right um doesn't look the bottle doesn't look like it's got anything to do with br540 but it does vibe in that in that in that style of fashion it's not exactly identical but there's going to be that factor that if you like br540 you're most likely going to like this one all these fragrances that i have here do not match when it comes to the gourmand nature of this one this actually feels edible there is the use of the whipped cream in here and it's very prominent there's also a praline here that works with a coconut and the combo of those two guys just makes you feel as though you're smelling a bowl of creamy dessert it's very yummy guys and it's got that vanillary dry down so everything about this is sweet it's lovable it's candy forward and it's going to make you smell like a snack so this is definitely one for the praline lovers and this one does not have the push and pull the praline is working in tandem with all the notes that complement what it is as opposed to that filter at nightfall by zara there is no like piercing sticky something there or like a piercing floral that is pushing and pulling this all the notes wrap up to build onto that already existing nutty creamy sugary praline there so it just becomes a bold fragrance in that regard uh ariana grande is cloud it's the fourth one on this list and then of course there is good girl now this is one fragrance that has a lot a lot of notes going on there uh this is one fragrance that also took the market by storm i'm gonna give it to carolina herrera i mean for creating the shoe i think she gave a lot of uh, fragrance houses some ideas not that they were stuck on ideas but this this presentation was daring of course now i've seen a lot of copies present their fragrances and something like this uh but the initial wow was from this particular shoe this is built around very heavyweight notes uh you will get that praline but it's actually fighting to stay afloat amidst a tonka especially the tonka that's the one that i'm going to blame everything on when it comes to this one but there is a sweetness that you're going to feel there guys bouncing off that praline and then there is that vanilla accord there is coffee in there uh, but uh, some people find it very hard to smell the coffee in here because again it's buried by that tonka and then there is a mix of some spices there and the woods right so this becomes a rich concentrated thick almost even a unisex type of a feel of a fragrance because of how you know heavy it interprets to the nose and how long lasting it is this is beast mode from the own set and i've had mine now for quite a while i don't know if you can see i don't know if you can see where mine is right it's right there i've had mine for quite a while now mostly because this is a heavyweight fragrance and a little goes a long way you know even if you are an over sprayer this thing is going to tell you to slow it down there as it dries down there i'm going to say maybe in the two hour mark or something like this it's going to be wafts of like a creamy wrap up to this fragrance guys so yes it also does have that friendly note right uh, not as gourmand as a lot of people would love it to be it does have praline there working with a lot of mixed uh you know notes there like the tonka and the cacao so yes it is one recommendation for anybody who wants to add a praline fragrance to their collection is carolina herrera's good girl 
Sixth on the lineup, guys, is going to be Killian's Angel's Shea. I'm going to spray this one on a test of paper. Another strong fragrance, this, right? Okay, so when it comes to this one, uh, some of you guys might just be stuck on that uh, rummy or boozy accord because that is what speaks the most. It's mostly booze and a Christmassy cinnamon that you get in this, a liqueur tone of a fragrance as well as other spices you know working together with that cinnamon woods as well there a vanilla a sandalwood tone to it right so it is a wrap up of a lot of things but i see a lot of people getting stuck in the booziness of this fragrance possibly maybe not even crossing over to an extent of enjoying the praline note when it kicks in but it does have a nutty toned praline guys uh maybe the only reason why the praline in this is not as distinct uh or as sweet as we want it to be is because this is a liqueur toned fragrance so because it's a liqueur toned fragrance it's one of those fragrances that if your nose cannot transition from that liqueur you might find yourself buried in just the liqueur and the cinnamon but there is definitely a nutty wrap up here coming from the praline guys so this is number six on the lineup and it's angel's share from the house of killian Seventh on the lineup, guys, is going to be Linda Wheatry. So I'm not going to bother opening uh, this one because it's a fragrance that uh, when it was released, I went crazy about it. I, have went, I had a lot of oils. I still have some oils of this fragrance to date. It was a DNA that I couldn't get a, you know enough of until I wore it in the sun one day and it just did too much to me. And that's when I said, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to slow down on this. I do have also two uh, clones of this fragrance. So it is a DNA that I worked around with for a very long time to an extent that I don't don't actually have to open it right more so that it, that it is a mini i can just tell you off head what this fragrance vibes like it does have the inclusion of the pretty note working together with a heavyweight uh, dose of a rose a rose that interprets as thick even smoky there because it has the inclusion of the incense that gives the rose like a smoky accord the juice in itself is going to come across as sticky sweet so some some of you guys are going to find it as you know a fragrance that's doing a little bit too much there if you do not like very heavyweight sweet scent there is also notes like licorice kumar in there adding to the weight of this fragrance patchouli adding to the longevity of this fragrance uh, so if you are looking for a fragrance that's going to last the longest uh this is also one of them i mean i have recommended fields that well all the fragrances I, I came with here let's just be honest are heavyweight but i'm talking about one of those those people that say for instance you haven't used this fragrance and you're wondering about the longevity this one is not going to disappoint you it even is to an extent polarizing there especially in that sweet wrap up of it it's one of those fragrances that i say when you wear this you must be committed to it otherwise if not you're going to find yourself changing clothes midway taking a bath midway because it is that heavy but it's here guys because it does have that a pretty note that gives it like a very sweet sugary feel even like a toasted sugar feel is how this praline interprets there uh you know adding of course to that dusty smoky rose it's the seventh one and the last one guys on this lineup so that's it guys i do know that there's a lot of other fragrances that include the note of praline uh, that are not within my collection but i wanted to show you the ones that i have do drop in the comment section if you know of any other fragrance that does have that praline note that you may want me maybe to sniff someday or possibly add to my collection thank you so much for joining me today it's been your girl c chronicles i do hope you enjoyed this installment of unscripted let's meet in the next video guys and remember to subscribe like and share stay safe stay blessed and i will see you in the next one guys bye for now